a Mac Mini guide for photographers and creators. My name is Jason Vong, and this $600 Mac Mini is the best entry-level computer for photographers and content creators. So whether you're someone who's just starting a photography journey or a seasoned photographer who's new to the Mac ecosystem, this video will be a great starter guide for you. Shopping. Now, if you're buying one soon, do know that you can instantly save $100 with Apple just by buying from their EDU online store if you're a student or an educator. If you have a Costco membership, they have a generous 90-day return policy, so if the Mac doesn't end up working out for you, you can always return it within that time frame if you have the original box and receipt. Please do not abuse this. Otherwise, shop anywhere that gives you the most benefits. Base model. So we're only going to be focusing on the 599 base M4 model configuration as it's the most affordable and by default comes with 16 gigabyte of memory, which is the absolute recommended minimum for running any photo and video apps. Since it's already such a good value, we're not going to worry about the more expensive M4 Pro model. We're just going to spend the extra money on other vital accessories that will give us more bang for our buck. Mac ports. All right, so we have our Mac Mini here. Isn't it so cute? Who's a cute little thing? So here's everything that you need to know about every single port here. Thunderbolt. So starting off with the back, these three are Thunderbolt ports as indicated by the Thunderbolt logo. Try to make sure that the things that you plug in back here can actually take advantage of the Thunderbolt speed. Don't be plugging in a keyboard back here, Michael. I'm talking about accessories that requires fast data transfer like an external solid state drive or SSD for short. The base model Mac Mini only has 256 gigabyte of storage, so we'll only be installing important apps on the Mac itself. External SSD. For all of our media files, we'll store them on an external SSD, and I highly recommend getting the Samsung T7 since we'll be editing both photos and videos. And these things are fast and reliable. There is a newer Samsung T9 model, which is actually faster, but if you want to save on some money, T7 is fine, and I recommend at least two terabytes. Now, these bigger hard drives like this Lacey here can work too, but they will run slower and won't take advantage of the Thunderbolt speed. But I would still get one anyways as a backup drive in case I lose the main SSD or it gets corrupted. I would still have my most recent and past projects on these bigger drives. Just make sure to do periodic backups. 5K monitor. The other thing that you will want to plug back here is a 5K Thunderbolt monitor like an Apple Studio display. But other brands like LG and Asus have high quality monitors that are also Thunderbolt compatible. HDMI. Of course, you don't have to use a Thunderbolt display. You can connect to any monitor with an HDMI connection. However, it is important for you to get a color accurate monitor because the last thing you want is to spend all that time editing your photos and videos just for them to come out looking completely different on everyone else's screen. So if you're looking for something affordable, a lot of people in my threads reply recommend the ASUS ProArt. There's a 1080p and 4K model. Whatever display you decide to go with, just make sure True Tone or Night Shift is turned off so your display doesn't change to a warmer tone while you're editing. Ethernet. For the fastest and most reliable internet connection, you want to connect an ethernet cable directly from your router or modem to the Mac Mini. Especially when you need to upload photos and videos to your clients on a tight deadline, this option here is far more faster and stable than just using Wi-Fi. USB-C front. Skipping over the obvious power port, there are two USB-C ports here on the front. These are not Thunderbolt ports, despite having similar looking hose. You can plug in anything here. And yes, Michael, you can plug in a keyboard here too. Jason's dongle. Now I'd recommend a USB hub dongle in case you have any accessories that still requires the fat USB-A plug. This dongle that I'm using also has a slot for an SD and micro SD card, so I can transfer the files that I've taken with the camera over to the Mac mini. And it just makes it so easy because it's in the front. The back here, I don't touch too often. Headphone port. Self-explanatory. Peripherals. Last couple, but very important things that you'll need, KBM, keyboard and mouse. Your choice, you might already have something lying around, but I do like the Logitech MX series for both mouse and keyboard, simply because they can pair up to three computers, which is great if you have an older PC or Mac still sitting on your desk. Powering up. All right, let's power this baby on. Oh, in case you've been hearing about this whole bottom button power drama, 
don't worry about it. With Macs, you never really need to turn off your computer. Just put it to sleep and walk away. Unless it's doing anything process intensive in the background, it's just gonna be silent for the most part. And the great thing about Macs is that when you wake them, they're immediately running again. No slowdown, no lag. You just pick up where you left off. Whereas with PCs, after you wake them from sleep, you might have to restart them from time to time just to get it running fresh again. Now, no hate on PCs. I love PCs. I game on an Asus, I game on a Razer, okay? I just prefer to do my professional work on Macs. Managing storage. Once you finish with the initial setup, first things first, let's manage our storage because 256 gigabyte ain't shit. Go down to your dock, open up system settings, go to general, storage, and you'll be able to see what's taking up space. If you're currently using an iPhone and you've set up the Mac with the same Apple ID, chances are your photos and messages are already downloaded to your Mac and it's taking up space. So what we're gonna do is open up photos, head up to photos, settings, and then uncheck iCloud photos and choose remove from Mac. It's not going to permanently delete your photos. It'll still be on your iCloud and on your iPhone. This just removes it from your Mac. Next is messages. Now, these are the photo and video attachments that you receive from your friends and family. Now, this one is a bit annoying, but you would Command A, which highlights everything, and press Delete until the storage shrinks. But you will need to do this a few times because it doesn't actually highlight everything for some reason. Again, it's not deleting these attachments nor messages from your phone, just from your Mac. Lastly, we can delete some applications that came pre-installed with our Macs. Now, the choices here are up to you. For example, I'm gonna delete GarageBand because I'm a photographer, not a musician. I got enough expensive hobbies already. And I'm also going to delete iMovie just because I use a different video editing software. But if you wanna use iMovie, keep it. Now, if the storage and windows here are looking a little funky, that's because I'm having to demonstrate this on my main MacBook. I've already deleted a lot of these apps on the Mac mini already. Again, bet through the list yourself, and if you ever need any of these apps back again, you can always reinstall them from the App Store. Formatting your SSD. Okay, so now we're gonna be setting up our main SSD. Again, this SSD is where we're gonna be storing all of our media files and project libraries. For the most part, we're never gonna be disconnecting this drive from the back of our Mac. So after you plug it in, go down to the dock, open up Launchpad, type in and open Disk Utility. Select your external SSD, not the internal one. Choose Erase. Give it a name and make sure the format is APFS. This format ensures the most compatibility and fastest communication between your SSD and your Mac. Then click Erase. Now, keep in mind, you will not be able to use this drive with a Windows computer only on Macs. So if you are planning on switching between operating systems a lot, I recommend getting another SSD if you can and choosing the XFAT format instead for cross-platform compatibility. And FYI, the backup drives can be in XFAT so we can access them on any platforms. Finder. Now here's a hot tip for you. When you're browsing files with Finder, I highly recommend going to View and choosing As Column because you can run through the preview of your photos and videos very quickly. And if you need to enlarge them, simply press Enter. AirDrop. All right, moving on to the thing that every Apple users rave about. AirDrop, which you can find here on Finder as well. You can AirDrop your edited photos and videos from your Mac to your iPhone quickly and vice versa. Just make sure both devices are unlocked and have Wi-Fi turned on. iPhone mirroring. But new to iOS 18 on your phone and Mac OS 15 on your Mac is iPhone mirroring, which you can use your iPhone on your Mac mini without touching it. So you can share photos and videos to your favorite social media platforms without doing the whole airdrop dance. And this is handy for apps that are mobile exclusive only. Just make sure the Wi-Fi on your phone is turned on and follow the on-screen prompt. Photo editing. All right, so let's get into the meat of photo editing. What are people using? How well does it run on the Mac? There are a handful of apps out there, but Adobe Lightroom is the most recommended. And no, they're not sponsoring this video. Don't worry, okay? It's something that I personally use. It is subscription-based, however, at $10 a month, but very worth it for what it can do. For example, in Lightroom, it can quickly recognize humans and animals and even skies and creates a mask over them, which makes targeted adjustments way easier. See here, I can brighten up my subject quickly without affecting the background or change the background color without affecting my subject. It also has a built-in denoise feature that can quickly clean up grainy images and it does it pretty quickly. This used to be a very intensive and machine taxing process. 
Of course, all the basic adjustments are instantaneous on the Mac Mini. You move a slider, it's very responsive. And you can copy the settings from one photo and apply it to hundreds of photos without it breaking a sweat. That's pretty insane for a $599 machine. The $10 a month subscription includes one terabyte of cloud storage, which will allow you to start or continue the edits on your mobile devices, which I thoroughly enjoy when we're traveling. And it does come bundled with the full version of Photoshop. Now, the great thing is because these two apps are so universally used, there are a ton of tutorials and presets out there on the internet. So if you don't know how to do something, there'll be videos and articles teaching you how to do it. But if you need general photography help outside of the Mac, like how to get sharper photos or even how to take better photos in low light, you can check me out, Jason Vong, on YouTube by hitting the subscribe button. Video editing. It's 2025. If you're a photographer, you're also a videographer. I know you know what I mean. You gotta be making videos of your photos. You gotta be filming behind the scenes of your photo shoot. You gotta be making marketing sizzle reels for your business. Luckily, the M4 Mac Mini is a video editing powerhouse as well. There are lots of apps out there, but I don't wanna overwhelm you, okay? So get CapCut. It's free, but you're gonna wanna subscribe for the pro version for the captioning feature. It used to be free, but they started charging it now, so it is what it is. It's also $10 a month or $90 if you flat out sub for the year. But I like CapCut because you can also start or continue your edit on your phone via their cloud system, which gives you 100 gigabytes when you sub to the pro plan. Otherwise, for a more dedicated video editing experience, DaVinci Resolve has a free version that's insanely powerful. And there's also iMovie that came pre-installed with your Mac. And all these apps here have an abundant amount of resources on the internet that you can learn from. If you guys found this guide helpful, consider a super thanks donation to support the channel, or simply stick around and listen to what my sponsor Squarespace has to say. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful websites. No coding knowledge needed. Just simply choose from their many templates and designs. Perfect for photographers and online shop owners. Use my link down below for a 14-day free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can use my code Jason Vong to save 10% off your first purchase of your website or domain. Guys, thank you so much for watching and we will see you guys in the next video. Peace. 256 gigabyte ain't shit.